travel is, is one, of the, one of the most important things for all artists to experience, whether they're going you know, around the corner or across the world. Travel can bring new things into the mind and heart. Travel and different places brings wherever I, it brings me to wherever that place is. I don't have to be a resident there to enjoy it. I don't have to be a tourist to enjoy it. I just, wherever it is, I take that place into my heart. Most of the work that I've done over the years has usually been done, been done in the form of a series. So, um, and I have to say that it's almost always based upon nature. And whether I picked up from something that's uh, in the woods, in the desert, or in the mountains, um, it's, it's always a very strong influence on the visual work, on my visual impact. Over the years, uh, one of the strongest influences was uh, was uh, based upon a series of work that I did from Norwegian fjords. And uh, that was extremely exciting because it was the first inspiration I ever had. And it was based upon waterways. The first time that I was influenced by the landscape and it actually created a new technique for me was when I was in Norway. It was a day after Elvis Presley died and I was high above the mountaintops and it was pouring, pouring rain. I had good foul, foul weather gear, gear on, Norwegian raincoats and I went up to this mountain and opened up my eyes and let the, eye, let the rain hit my eyeballs and I was eating blueberries and just looking down at the torrential rain and I said, oh my gosh, I have to capture that. So I saw a meandering waterway way down below, and I, that excited me. It was actually the very first time I got inspired. And I said, I would like to see if I can get that down. I couldn't do any drawing in the rain there, but what I wound up doing is when I got back to my studio, I had a lithographic stone in front of me, and I came up with a technique that was very directly involved with that waterway where I took this little square lithographic crayon and I put it in my hand with pressure on my thumb and kind of let it come across and towards me. And then I put the crayon in my left hand and did and echoed that first black area, but left a little space between the two black areas. So that created a negative space. And that was a technique that I kind of, um, developed, not because it was a new technique in terms of drawing, but for me, it was something that helped recall that sense of the waterway. I had a grant to go to New Zealand as a resident artist and to spend three months there. And I said, oh, that's going to be easy for me. I have my inspiration. I'll just bring it along from Canyon de Chez. Well, I was wrong. Uh, because what happened when I got to New Zealand, I, w I got just so taken back, aback by the New Zealand landscape. And I looked at, at these hillsides of, you know, they had a lot of, sh they have a lot of sheep there. At the time they had 70 million sheep and 3 million people. So um, the sheep actually like to walk and they go back and forth on, in the grass and they eat and they do their thing. and. I didn't really realize that there were no sheep when I was looking at a hillside, but I saw lines going back and forth and up and down, meandering, going this way and that. And I said, what, are that? what is that all from? And then I realized it was, they were sheep tracks. They were the creators of those marks. And um, I just happened to be the facilitator of bringing those marks that the sheep created to paper. That's how the linear patterns more or less started uh, with that combination of Canyon de Chez and New Zealand.
I did about 10 years worth of work from found objects that I found in nature, but they were usually revolved around uh, discarded things and, uh, oh, I'd have to say resurrected uh, things that were not being, that were not brand new. These zinc plates sat probably 50 years and weathered and oxidized and, and all, and, and then I had to pry them all apart. I didn't know too much about them other than they looked beautiful. They had a quality that was a sort of partnership with, with nature, because nature was creating this oxidation and corrosion. And I looked at it and I said, it's impossible to restore these to new. So I decided to use them as they were and then put my own two cents worth. So nature did one part and then I did the other part and we worked together. You mentioned that learning to read a printing plate before inking is like sensing the log before wielding the ax. Could you elaborate on that thought and how it relates to your artistic process? I don't approach something with a plan. I let the plan evolve. So when I see that paper, whatever it is that I'm about to work on, I read it, I feel it, I touch it. Uh, sometimes before inking it, I, I run my hands over this surface. Uh, sometimes I close my eyes and I think, oh, what's, what's this going to be about? What colors am I going to use? And then I, that's the way I read it. It's not just looking at something and saying, well, I'm going to make uh, multiples of this. That's not what it's about. It's feeling the energy of the work. When I was teaching at Central Connecticut State University, the librarian there said to me, you ought to go down to Harvey Littleton and work down there. He's doing something different. So I don't know whether I wrote Harvey a letter or uh, called him or whatever, but uh, well, Harvey said, sure, come on down. But I got there and then Harvey, of course, showed me around and uh, all the the different uh, things. I was very impressed with his setup because he had two big presses, one being a Charles Brand press and the other the American French tool press. And they're the top of the, they were the top of the line presses and still are um, the top of the line in printmaking. And uh, so I said, wow, this is, this is all, all wonderful. Let's go. And, and he showed me, he said, now this is how, how are you going to do it? and he told me what I had to do. And this is a sandblasting machine. He told me how to use it. I never used a sandblaster, and it was really great because I learned these new tools. Working with Harvey was a challenge. Harvey was a fantastic man, but he was also a challenge because he had his way. And uh, you didn't argue with him. You just worked with him. And uh, so I didn't know too much about him, but he had a reputation. And uh, first of all, he had a good reputation, and that was, that was what was important. The second part of his personality was that he had his um, way of working that he tried to have people fall under his um, 
Well, like a, under his direction. Well, that's sort of a tough thing for artists to do. Well, actually, one of the most exciting things working in the Littleton studio was having Judy O'Rourke there. She was a terrific printer and a very cooperative person. She was a true, dedicated individual that just would do anything. So that was probably the most exciting thing is to have that collaboration going. I didn't need to go to Littleton Studios to make prints, but I did have a satisfaction of doing something brand new to me and having someone help me with my own printing. Um, so it was, um, it was an honor. It was a really big honor to work under Harvey's, uh, in, a, in a sense, under Harvey's tutelage. Uh, it was a very special thing. And I think I visited his studio probably more than any living artist. I think uh, over the years, many, many, many trips there. And I, I would either drive down or fly down and uh, always had a wonderful time. I was a student at the Academy of Fine Art in Munich, Germany. And my professor was a terrible tease. He would dangle a carrot in front of me and he said, he'd never tell me how to, he'd never teach me the answer. He'd always give me the question. And I had to think about it in a foreign language too. So it made it, it made it another level of putting the mind into into whatever I was trying to figure out. And one day he put this material in my hand and he said, uh, try this out. And I said, well, what is it? And he says, it's a new printing plate. Try it out, it's used in industry. And I said, well, what do I do with it? And he said, well, I'm not gonna, I don't know because, it, but I can tell you that if you stick it in the sun, it's going to become hard. And any place that you don't put in the sun, it's going to wash away. So, so, in essence, what he gave me was this material, this plate that I could treat and it would have areas that were high and raised and other areas that were deep. So that printing plate uh, was the beginning. And so I didn't know how to use it. And it, I got a grant later on through <clears throat> the New York State Council in the Arts and they gave me $7,800 to play. And that's where um, everybody should get grants so that they can learn how to play and explore. And so I explored the scientific process and, see, and, and tried to figure out how the sun could affect these plates and how, what, what kind of imagery could I put on these things to make, them, to make it work. And it became, um, it became a challenge. It was really... Um, it became a challenge because nobody ever did it. I had nobody to turn to. Uh, I was here. My professor was off in Germany. and He probably would have told me, but uh, he didn't want to. He had this, uh, you know, he kept his, his teaching um, philosophy was one of dangling the carrot. Say, you know, you got to figure it out. I'm the president of a non-for-profit arts and science foundation uh, organization that uh, promotes and educates science and art. So, uh, in fact, there's a little quote that I'd like to tell you. Only art and science can elevate us to a higher form of living. Science, to me, works from here. Art works from here, from the heart. So, with the two combined that's how art is made. Or when the two are combined, that's how scientists become inventors. But you say, well, where does the science come in? Well, it enabled me to invent the process of gold gold solar plate. That's, that's, a, that's a scientific process. It is not an art process. It's a, it's, a, it's a technique that we use science to create the art. So that's a, that's a nice little link in there.